In this video, we're going to take a look at what are the three best technical indicators when it comes to trading the price of gold. Hello, I'm David Jones from Capital.com and I thought we'd do um, a strategy video on trading gold when it comes to what techniques and what indicators to use. Before we get into it, uh, if you're watching these videos, just make sure you're subscribed to support the channel and then we can push out more content like this. But let's start talking a bit more about um, using indicators to trade gold. It remains an incredibly popular market. We've seen some big moves uh, over the year. You know, trading with us, our, our clients have tight spreads, zero commissions, and um, no costs for depositing or taking money out. And I thought what we do, because it's such a popular market, let's look at the techniques uh, in a bit more detail. So I'm going to look at three different indicators for trading gold, talk about the pros and cons, and at the end, talk about the one that I think is best. So um, let's get into it. Let's get started with the RSI. So first of all, we're going to look at uh, one of my favorite indicators, uh, the RSI. So we're starting off here with a blank screen for the gold price, just that the price chart going on. We're going to add in an RSI, then I'll talk a bit more about it. So we're going to go to indicators here. Um, it's in the popular list relative strength index, add that in. I'll just change the colors a bit just to make things a bit clearer. And I'm gonna make this a 10 day RSI. So 10 days for me, because it's, it's two trading weeks, you know, five trading days in a week, 10 day RSI, um, that's it. So the RSI is a classic overbought, oversold uh, indicator. So in this example with a 10 day RSI, it's looking at the last 10 days of price changes and it's trying to give us a reading as to whether the market is, is trading at an extreme compared to its range over the last 10 days. So traditionally, um, anything, a reading above sort of 70%. So if we look at, at this area here, June, July of 2019, the market said to be overbought. The market's gone too far, too fast. It didn't work too badly earlier on in 2019 back here. And a reading below 30%, and for gold, we've got to go all the way back to April on my 10-day RSI. A reading below 30%, the market is said to be oversold. So the market has been pushed down too far and is due to spring back. And you can see the signals here um, for, for 2019. Okay, so that's, that's really how it, how it works. Very simple indicator. So above 70%, it's suggesting that maybe things are a bit overheated below 30 percent perhaps the sell-off has gone too far the only problem is and it is a big problem you can see it here when we have a really strong trend like if we have june 2019 when the market really started moving and um sort of broke through 1300 and went running up to 1550 the rsi goes overbought very quickly so in a strong trending market the problem with the rsi is it can try and get you out of a position too early or get you to go against the overall trend. So I would suggest the way to use it, if there's a clear trend in the market, use the RSI to buy into that trend if it's an uptrend or to sell short into rallies in a downtrend. One more use of the RSI um, is the idea of divergence. When the market does one thing but the RSI is doing something else, it can be another warning that we're near uh, a major turning point. So let's have a look at, look at this in August. So the RSI for gold in August went overbought. The market was trading at 1525. Gold pushed higher to 1550 uh, in the, the last week of August. The RSI was still overbought, but was, was making a, a lower high. So this is known as bearish divergence, where the market's pushed higher, the RSI is making a lower high. It can be a warning that maybe the trend is running out of steam. And that did prove to be the case uh, for a few weeks. And the flip side is bullish divergence, where the market pushes to a low, pushes lower still, but the RSI is making higher lows. Can be a suggestion that maybe the market's about to bounce back. So it's a really simple indicator. It's been around for decades, uh, nothing too complicated. And I just like having it on the charts to give us a feel for where we are uh, in terms of you know how overbought or how, how oversold the market is, but it doesn't work all the time. So there's the RSI, very simple indicator, classic overbought, oversold, uh, but not so good when the markets are trending. So let's take a look at, um, again, a simple but often effective indicator when markets are trending strongly. Now, moving averages are a popular, simple indicator for markets. Um, they work well in trending markets, and we've had some good trends in gold. So let's put a moving average on this chart. So I'm going to go again to the top, 
to indicators. Popular, it's going to be in there. We're going to stick with a simple moving average. Let's add that on. Again, I'll change the colors to make it all a bit clearer. So for now, I'm sticking with the 20-day moving average uh, for the gold price. So it's what this looks at is just the price is over the previous 20 days, adds them up, uh, divides by 20, and comes up with an average price. And of course, if we're looking on a daily chart, every day, there's a different closing price. So this moving average gets recalculated and gets plotted on the chart, as we can see here. So the traditional way of using moving averages um, is a mechanical trading system. So if we look at, for example, back here in May of 2019, the price moves above the moving average. So we can see the candle is closing above that moving average. If the price moves through the moving average, that's considered uh, a buy signal. And then if we jump to maybe some of the more recent signals in September, if the price falls below the moving average, then that's a sell signal. Okay, so this is a classic trend following approach uh, used in many of financial markets. Another one that's been around for decades. It works well when the market's trending. Clearly, you can see this run here from May through to September. And if we take it back a little bit, look at the, the end of 2018. Again, we had a good trend from November through to uh, the end of Feb. So again, some good signals there. Where it doesn't work so well is when the market isn't trending. So if we have a market that's moving broadly sideways, because the price and the moving average are close together, you get a lot of false signals. So you're buy, sell, buy, sell. You know, there's no real trend forming. So, but I think, you know, it, it's definitely got its merits, again, as a very simplistic system. You know, there's just this, this idea of being um, either long or short based on whether it's above or below the moving average. You know, the, the drawback is it doesn't have the good sense to stand aside when the market's trending sideways because it doesn't know when a real trend uh, is going to perform. So it can be frustrating if you're using moving averages and the market you're trading um, just goes flat, you know, because you'll have a lot of false signals. But clearly, as you can see, if I just take this out from this gold, gold chart over the last couple of years, we have had some good trends. The moving average by its very nature has caught them, but it's also been caught up in some of the, the choppy trading. So the moving average does well when we see markets really starting to move. But considering that markets spend a lot of time going sideways, you know, it gets really chopped up and does lots of false signals during that sort of time frame. So let's wrap things up before I talk about what I think is the best one. Let's wrap things up and look at maybe a combination of the moving average and the RSI, the MACD indicator. The final indicator we're going to look at uh, for our gold chart is really I think, a combination of, of the RSI, like a, an extreme overbought, oversold, and the moving average. So we're going to take a look at the MACD, moving average, convergence, divergence. Let's put that on the chart. So again, the indicators tab, it's in our popular section because it is popular. So we'll, um, we'll have it add in, add in the MACD. Here we go. I'll just change the colors to make it a little bit clearer. So here's our, our MACD down at the bottom of the chart. So we've got 12, 26, 9. These are the default settings. So what it does, first of all, we have um, the MACD line. So shown on this chart as the yellow line. And that's the, the difference between a 12 and 26 day exponential moving average. That's a really simple calculation. Then we have the red line. This is known as the signal line. So this is a nine day moving average of that MACD line. This is where this 12, 26, nine comes in. And losing it again, very simplistically, it's the crossovers here that generate buy and sell signals. So if we walk back on the chart for gold, again, back in May, um, we saw the lines cross over. That's a suggestion that perhaps the trend is picking up. It worked pretty well. And then of course the crossover up here was a sell signal. Didn't work as well because the price of gold has been in such a strong trend. Another buy signal down here in August, and then some sort of fairly messy sell signals up here uh, in, in late August. And at the moment, at the time of recording, it's moved down pretty much to an extreme again. So perhaps if we see a bit of strength in the gold price, we'll see these two cross over and give us another buy signal. What we also have with the MACD is the histogram. You can see it here plotted on the chart. And this is just very simply showing us how far apart the MACD line and the signal line are. So when the histogram is falling, it means the price, these two lines start to move together. So perhaps we should get ready for a crossover. So again, some people will use the MACD histogram as a, a way of setting up trading signals. So for example, 
Again, at the time of recording, over the last week or so, the MACD histogram has been moving up, meaning these two lines are moving closer together. So perhaps we're gonna get a buy signal so they could use the histogram to try and anticipate um, the signal. So that's, that's a, almost a combination, I suppose, of traditional oscillators like RSIs with um, the simple moving average. And that's, that's our MACD. So I suppose the MACD does try to combine the trend following element with the extreme elements that we saw uh, in the RSI as well. It maybe won't come as a surprise to you to hear there's no perfect system. There is no system that works 100% of the time. So for me, I'm all in favor of keeping it simple. And I think um, perhaps the best indicator you can use um, is a simple one, like the moving average. I prefer the RSI, particularly when looking for divergence, and combine it with what the price is doing. You know, if the market is trending, uh, as with gold, as we saw throughout the summer, in a strong trend like that, don't use an indicator uh, as a, an excuse to go against the major trend. Try and use it in harmony with the trend. So if you've got the market trending higher, use the buy signals from an RSI to try and time your buys into the trend. So for me, the simple RSI uh, is the one that I choose to use, which is why you see it on all of the charts in these videos. We'll wrap things up there, but as usual, don't forget to never miss out on our content. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. And if you click the alarm bell thing down there, you get automatically notified by YouTube whenever we upload new content. But for this quick look at three indicators uh, for gold, we'll leave it there. So from me, David Jones and Capital.com, good luck with your trading.